By the time we return to the palace, evening has fallen. I hope we're not late for dinner. The minute the carriage doors open, we are greeted by two familiar faces. Sir Alcaster and Sir Mithro stand before us. Oh, we haven't met you before, sir. Princess Emmeline, Prince Rod, I was on my way to look for you when Sir Mithras informed me of your whereabouts. He glares at the knight escort and the knight shrinks back. Sir Alcaster turned sharply to me afterwards, his eyes narrowed. Why is he looking at me like that? It was getting late and the queen was worried. I'm so sorry. Princess Emmeline, Prince Rod, it is almost time for dinner. Please, let me escort you inside. Sir Mithros gestures for them to follow him. I am about to follow after them when Sir Alcaster suddenly moves to block my path. His eyes are cold. He opens his mouth to say something, but then closes it and shakes his head. What? What? You are dismissed, girl. You may go back to your quarters. But... That is an order. His gaze is piercing. Even when I was the princess, I was not able to stand up to that gaze. Yes, sir. Where is my quarters? After dinner, I make my way back to the room assigned to me. As I walk down the hall, I notice Rod heading in my direction. Rod? Oh, he suddenly grabs my arm and pulls me away down the hall. Huh? Where are you taking me? Rod does not answer and just continues moving until we reach an unfamiliar door. What is going on? Rod cuts me off by placing a finger on my lips. He looks around warily before finally pulling me in through the door with him. What? Well, this took a turn. This place. I have heard of this place before, but have never seen it. Is this the secret passage that leads into town? Rod does not answer me. He simply keeps walking, and I see no other option but to trail after him. How is it that you know this place? He still refuses to answer. Are you deaf? Uh, Rod suddenly stops and I bump into his back. I stumble back with a scowl. You ask too many questions. Because you refuse to answer any of them. I glare back at him until Rod makes an exasperated sound. Ugh. Lady Parfait is the one who told me about this passage. It makes sneaking out of the palace easier. Parfait? She did not give me any explanation as to how she knew of this place. There are only meant to be two copies of the keys. The king has one, and Sir Alcaster has the other. Then why do you have a key? Don't tell me you stole it from the king. I am not a thief. Lady Parfait also has a copy. She saw fit to provide me with a key for my own use. What? How does Parfait have a key to this place? You'll have to ask her that yourself. Once we step into town, I realize where it is that we are headed. We're going back to the Marchen. Well, obviously. Where do you think you're going? To Viorca's toy shop? Dolora is the first person we see as soon as we enter the Marchen. Well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Dolora, you... Rod's glare silences me. He steps forward and points back at me, gaze icy. She is not staying at the palace. What? Dolora raises an eyebrow. Why is that? She works there now. I do not know what game you are playing, but I will not be a part of it. Excuse me, this is not a game. It's a visual novel. I do not want you meddling in my life as you meddled with hers. The room's temperature drops several degrees. Dolores stares at Rod, her expression suddenly lacking any emotion. With all due respect, your highness, I do not want to meddle with your wallowing. But just because you do not wish to break your curse doesn't mean that others shouldn't want to either. You should be humble that our princess here thought you would be able to help her. Rod raises an eyebrow. Where is Lady Parfait? Of course you want to talk to Parfait, because she puts things nicely. Fine, I'll fetch her for you. Dolora curtsies as she sweeps out of the room. <sighs> Rod
Rod clearly looks irritated, but he doesn't put a voice to his agitation. Now that we're alone in the empty room, the silence is deafening. And so I ask him the question that has bothered me since we came here. <sighs> I mean, I so badly want to... to ask him this? But I mean, he wouldn't even a answer me about Fiorica. Why would he answer that for me now? This one, I feel like he would have no problem telling me. I'm gonna go with this. Oh, right. So why do you want me out of the palace? I guess I should have read it first. The further away you are from my family, the better. I glare at him. Your reaction is completely unwarranted. I am trying to make up for what I have done in the past. Only because you are being forced to. Ah, right choice. Why should that make any difference? Besides, I am still willing to help you break your curse, even though it appears you do not want to. I do not realize the anger inside of me at first, and then I notice that my hands are fists and that I am shaking. You are angry at me for treating your family with unkindness, and yet you do not treat me with any respect or kindness either. Excuse me? I realize that this is the angriest I have felt in a long time, and it makes words fall out of my mouth. You are guilty of the same disrespect you hold me accountable for. We are both being cruel to family, aren't we? Rod's eyes are ablaze as he stalks toward me. He stops right in front of me, his mouth pressed into a firm line. Oh wow, he's a lot closer. As you are so fond of telling Emmeline, we do not share any blood. The only thing pulling us together is the king, and you do not share his morals. Remember this, Lucette. You will never be part of my family. Well, thank you. I feel less guilty about dating you now. We can make our own family. <laughs> eh, I'm terrible. And I will never see you as a sister. Good. These are all good things. Rod storms out of the reception area just as Delora enters. Sorry, looks like Parfait wasn't in. You were eavesdropping that whole thing. She pauses and gives me a wry smile. Seems this partnership is going well. I throw my hands up in anger. He is infuriating. Not as helpful as you thought. I was surprised you were asking for his help in the first place. All I have been doing today is following around Emmeline, and he still finds reason to snap at me. In his eyes, I can do nothing right, even though I am making an honest effort to break my curse. Delora eyes me as she slides down into a chair. Has he told you anything about his curse? Nothing useful. Huh. Boys can be so secretive about the silliest things. Rod has been aware of how to break his curse from the very beginning. Then why hasn't he broken it? I have no idea. I think the only other person who knows the full terms and conditions of Rod's curse is Parfait. Parfait? Parfait has known Rod for a while. She convinced him to keep coming to the Marchant, even after he gave up on breaking his curse. Parfait also thinks that working with you will convince Rod to try finding another way to break his curse. Another way? Don't ask me. I don't know much about his curse either. So is there more than one way to break a curse? But if you keep trying, you might convince Rod to talk. I doubt that very much. It seems that all I'm doing is convincing Rod that I do not deserve to break my own curse. Dolora looks at me curiously for a few moments, then she grins. I have an idea. If it is another terrible idea... Oh no, this one's much better. I'll just stick around with you. You know, watch out for you. What? Dolora? Watch out for me? What are you doing? This is not helpful. I am surprised when Dolora suddenly stands before me in her doll form. There's no way you and Rod are going to sort yourselves out without some kind of help, so I'll be tagging along. It's much easier when I'm travel-sized, hmm? Why do I feel like she'll only make things worse? Why am I saying this out loud? Come on, then. Dolora somehow manages to jump into the front pocket of my apron, which is thankfully large enough to fit her doll body. Let's go find us a prince and get ourselves back to the palace. This is ridiculous. Chapter 4. 
one step forward. Which means the next chapter is two steps back. <laughs> well, it has been more than a week since Rod and I returned to the Marchin. He has been avoiding me ever since that day. Ugh, you're so hard to please. Not that we have much cause to be around each other nowadays. I am constantly on my feet preparing for Emmeline's ball. This is ridiculous. Better to be busy than bored, princess. I stop for a moment to better balance the pile of fabrics that I am carrying. One of the maids has ordered me to bring this to a designated room so that it can be sorted out. I am being reduced to fetching and carrying. And I have made no progress in accomplishing my first good deed. I doubt that simply following orders from the other maids will help me get my first good deed. I feel a shuffling in my pocket and then notice Delora peeking her porcelain face out. Better to obey rather than disobey, at least. You're not going to get a good deed being stubborn. Anyway, you've got to put yourself out there a bit more, princess. You can't just do whatever's convenient for you. That's not good. Delora has been no help at all. Wait, I recognize this place. Isn't this where your room is? I stop in front of the door to my old bedroom. Ever since I came here, I've been ignoring this room, not wanting to see what the king did to it during my absence. Do you not want to go in? Why should I? It is not as if it is my room anymore. Oh, you are no fun. Aren't you curious about how it's changed? I would be lying if I said that I wasn't. I guess a little peek would not hurt. It's the same. Even the dolls are still here. Did you protect it with magic for me? I step into the room and close the door behind me. Ugh. It is like stepping into the past. The room is exactly as I left it. It seems completely untouched. <laughs> Moments later, Dolores is standing before me in her human form. It looks like someone's been dusting in here. Strange, considering no one should remember who this room even belongs to. I glance around, eyes wide. Everything looks the same. I put the fabrics that I am carrying down on my bed and make my way to the shelf where my dolls are displayed. My eyes pause on a specific doll. Whoop. That is really creepy. This one was not here before. Delora raises an eyebrow. Maybe you don't just don't remember that one because she wasn't very memorable. You do have a lot of dolls, after all. No, I know each of my dolls by name. This one is definitely new. She looks very similar to the ones I saw at Viorca's shop. Oh, right, because <laughs> Emmeline bought that for you. But how did it get there? I quickly turn at the sound of the doorknob. My eyes move to Delora, but she has already turned into a doll and tucked herself into a corner of the shelf with the rest of my dolls. Emmeline stands in the doorway, eyeing me curiously. Lucette? What are you doing here? I made a mistake and thought I was supposed to bring these fabrics here. I hope she does not see through my lie. Emmeline shakes her head, smiling. It is not your fault, Lucette. You're still getting used to the palace and its many rooms. I got lost here all the time when I first arrived, too. This room is interesting, though. Father expressly ordered that it be kept clean, but otherwise undisturbed. Why would he say that? He won't say why, but apparently this room is very special to him. Maybe it belonged to someone he cherished. Cherished? What a joke. Still, I cannot help but feel hope at her suggestion. I don't think Father would like either of us being in here. We should leave soon. I only came here to put a ribbon on one of the dolls. One of the dolls? Yes, I put one of my dolls here. She walks past me to pick up the doll I did not recognize. I bought this. I know Emmeline always visited Viorica, but I did not think she liked dolls. She always preferred receiving and buying books. So why does she have this doll? Do you like dolls? Well, I mean, I don't mind them, but I don't usually buy them for myself, no. So why did you buy this one? Emmeline looks at the doll with a sad smile and shakes her head. I... I'm not sure. I bought it as a gift, I remember that much. I was going to give it to someone who liked dolls. Someone I wanted to befriend. 
I don't remember why, but it feels right to leave the doll here until I can remember whom it was I was meant to give her to. Emmeline is silent for a moment before she turns to me with a bright smile. I know you have a delivery to make, but could you come with me to the palace entrance first? Mother is still busy talking with the cook, so the fabrics can wait. I resist the urge to glare at her. She better not be dragging me around to do yet more errands. I'm expecting a delivery, and I might need your help. I thought so. I have no choice but to nod. Of course. I begrudgingly follow Emmeline toward the entrance, and there I see the delivery carriage. A familiar person stands beside it. Viorica! Emmeline pulls Viorica into a tight hug. I turn my attention away to glare at the number of boxes at the back of the carriage. I will no doubt have to help carry them inside. How are the preparations for the ball coming? Emmeline's smile seems forced at first, but then eases into something softer. It's going well, I suppose. How about the wedding? Desmond and I have finalized the date. It will be two days after your ball. I can't wait to see you in your wedding dress. These two always talk so much when they get together. Because <laughs> they're girls. Doing that girl talk. I ignore their chatter as I walk up to the carriage to observe the boxes piled inside. What is in the boxes? Oh! Viorica reaches out to grab one. She hands it to me. I'm helping with the ball decorations. I came by with part of the order today. Part of it? Careful, it's a bit heavy. I take the box from her hands and nearly stumble. This is heavy. Emily should have the male servants do this. Queen Ophelia plays quite a large order. I brought the more fragile decorations first. Oh, the glass baubles and vases? I grit my teeth as I shift the box in my arms in an attempt to make it easier to hold. I thought you worked at a toy shop. Yes, but we also have aisles dedicated specifically to party decorations. What kind of toy shop is that? <laughs> Lucette, will you be alright? I feel annoyance simmer within me. I am obviously not alright. Emmeline reaches out to help me with the box, but she is too late. I have only taken one step forward when the box slides and I stumble. I manage to cradle it in my arms, but its weight is too much for me. Before I hit the ground, I feel strong arms around my waist, pulling me back upright. The box is taken from me. Oh! I was not expecting you! I really was expecting, like, Fritz to be there. <laughs> Only mackerel. Thank you. My heart and mind are racing, and for a moment I cannot comprehend what has just happened. Are you alright? Rod? I glance to the side and am shocked to see Rod standing there. The expression on his face gives nothing away, but with our close distance I can see some flicker of emotion in his bright eyes. Concern? I am... Lucette? I'm so sorry! Are you okay? Rod pushes me and I stumble forward, almost tripping on the ground. And the, and the moment's gone. He raises an eyebrow at me. Know your limits, Lucette. I glare at him as anger begins to bubble up in my chest. I mean, he just saved me. I'm not going to tell him off. It's fine. It's, you're, you're fine. You're, a, you're fine in my book. I clench my fists and take a deep breath to try and calm myself. <sighs> I will not stoop to his level. He is the one being cruel here, not me. <laughs> Let him be cruel is the right choice. You shouldn't have stubbornly tried to carry something that was too heavy for you. I will not take responsibility if you get hurt. Rod, you shouldn't be angry with her for trying to help me. It was my fault for giving her something so heavy. Viorica, what are you doing here? Rod's voice is still cold. Viorica looks startled by his tone. I only came to deliver some of the decorations for the ball. And you thought Emmeline and her maid could carry these things on their own? I... Rod, this is not her fault. I am the one who chose to bring Lucette with me. I underestimated the size of the delivery. Viorica was just delivering the supplies. At least she admits her mistakes. I never thought Rod would be so stubborn. 
Emmeline's expression softens as she looks at her brother. She looks sad. Come on, you as his sister should know that he's got, the, got a thing for Viorica. You should know! Why do you keep torturing him like this? Rod ignores her and picks up the box that I had been carrying. He begins to walk away before he suddenly stops and glances back at me. Come on. Rod? We're going to call some servants to carry these boxes in. He turns around and begins to walk away. I am Emmeline's personal maid, not his. I glance at Emmeline, who nods her head. I really am so sorry. Thank you for helping my brother, Lucette. I curtsy ever so slightly before running after Rod. <laughs> run, 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 run. Rod, wait! He picks up his pace as if trying to lose me. I turn the corner and barely stop myself before running right into Rod's back. What now? Why are you so angry at me today? I have barely even spoken to you. Your mere presence is enough to darken my mood. It's because you saw Viorca. Don't take your feelings up for Viorca out on me. I glare at him and cross my arms. Funny. You call me cruel, but right now you are worse than I ever was. I don't need someone who hasn't even managed a single good deed to lecture me. Ugh! I have to try very hard to resist the urge to slap him. You were supposed to help me get a good deed. As I said before, I never agreed to this. I still refuse to help you. <sighs> Rod starts walking again and I hurry after him. I cannot help but recall how cold he was with Viorica earlier. I thought they were friends, but he treated her like this at the toy shop too. Why were you so angry with Viorica earlier? No reason. I raise an eyebrow when Rod quickly answers the question. Then you were cold for no reason. You have such a princely disposition. <laughs> Rod frowns but has no rebuttal for my words. You must be genu generally cold and unfriendly. Excuse me? That would explain why you treated Viorica as you did. I had thought that you two were childhood friends. Viorica was always closer with Emmeline than with me. We may have been friendly once, but we've since become distant. Distant? It is none of your business. I pause as we pass by my door, remembering that I left both the fabrics and Delora inside. I make my way toward the door and open it. What are you doing? None of your business. <laughs> Damn. Enjoyed your, f your field trip. I frown when I see her sitting on my bed in human form. What would you have done if it wasn't me? Us witches have a sense for these things. Dolora? Rod slowly enters the room. Ah, <laughs> Sebby's saying hello. It's nice to see you here, Lady Dolora. Nice to see you too, little Sebby. Why are you here? Dolora shrugs as she inspects her nails. I thought I would help the princess here since someone doesn't seem very willing. Rod furrows his eyebrows at her. I didn't... Yes, yes, I knew. You didn't sign up for this. But do you really think you have a choice, Rod? Delora looks at Rod pointedly. You know the consequences if this fails. Rod looks away, expression conflicted. Consequences? What are you talking about? Consequences for not helping me with my curse? Ah... <sighs> Rod turn slides heavily before turning back to Dolora. He does not pay attention to me. I am not the right person for this. It doesn't matter what you think. The princess thought you were. So suck it up and do your job. Ugh. Rod is silent for a few moments before he finally faces me, looking resigned. I will help you then, but don't expect me to change my opinions of you. I shrug at him. It's not like I was expecting you to in the first place. Delora grins with clear triumph. Good talk. <laughs> yes, very good. Uh, in order to achieve your good deeds, you're going to need to mend what you broke before. I feel I already know what he's going to say. My sister has always wanted to be your friend, so you must do just that. Show her kindness and you may be able to get your first good deed through her. Show her kindness, huh? Hmm. 
Dolora decides to stay in my room for the time being, saying that she believes Rod will be able to help me for now. Later, I make my way to the dining room with the fabrics and see Emmeline and Ophelia inside. Lisette! Ah, oh, I see you have the fabric. Thank you. Ophelia takes the topmost sample of fabric and begins to inspect it as Emmeline walks up to me. Where's Rod? He returned to his studies. Oh, right. He has history lessons today. And I am yet to finish my history homework, which is due tomorrow. As Emmeline muses aloud, I ponder what Rod to told me earlier. I must become Emmeline's friend. But is that really a good deed? I hope Rod didn't send the servants out before he went back to his room. I wanted to tell him that Viorca and I had already called on guards to bring the boxes inside. Maybe he decided to start his lessons earlier, so that he could make your dance lessons this evening. Dance lesson? Father wanted to hire the best dance instructor in Angiel, but I honestly feel more comfortable with Rod teaching me. Ooh, he can, he can dance. I like this. He's a good dancer, so Father has allowed it. That is a surprise. I did not know Rod could dance. He used to prefer singing, but then... Oh no, he was like, he was just like Little Mermaid. Ah. Ophelia trails off. I know that she is talking about the fairy tale curse, but I do not expect her to divulge such information to a maid like myself. He's decided to focus on his dancing for the past few months. Ophelia glances down at the fabrics and looks up and smiles at me. Lucette, would you mind helping me with this? I obediently walk over to the fabrics Ophelia wants me to look through. They are apparently samples for the tablecloth that will be used during the ball. This is going to be a long day. <laughs> yep. Rod comes immediately to the throne room after his history lessons to start on his dance lessons with Emmeline. I cannot wait. I'm only standing here because it is my responsibility as her personal maid to watch over her as she practices. Mm-hmm. I watch as she steps out of rhythm and Rod sighs at her. Ah, uh, you're doing it wrong. That's the tenth time. Sorry. Again. They start from the beginning, and I am unable to stifle my own sigh when Emily messes up the same step again. Ah, uh, this would make the eleventh time. I really am terrible at this. Would you rather have the royal dance instructor teach you? He has more experience teaching than I do. Oh no, I really do want you to teach me, Rod. I'm sorry that I'm such a slow learner. Um. Oh, no, it's, it's he's saying M. Um. I thought he was like, um. <laughs> um. You're always good at everything. Singing, dancing, cooking. R uh, Prince Rod cooks? Yes, Rod does cook. He's very good at it. You didn't have to tell her that, Em. Does it really matter? I love bragging about how talented my little brother is. Oh, no. Shame. Oh, no. I see a tinge of pink in Rod's cheeks as he turns away. Is he embarrassed? Emmeline looks down at the floor, her smile smaller. I wish I was as talented as you, Rod. I had always thought Emmeline was overly optimistic. She always seemed to bounce back with a smile, no matter how many times I pushed her away. Now I cannot help but reconsider that thought. Still seeing her like this only irritates me. Pitying yourself will get you nowhere. Not everyone can be perfect at everything when they first start out. Uh. I remember when Mother gave me similar lessons. She was always such a harsh teacher, and she hated when I showed weakness in front of her. She made me keep practicing until I had perfected whatever it was she wanted me to do. Failure was never an option. I never had time for self-pity. Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, just try harder. Let failure inspire you to do better. Lusa, that was... She's right, Rod. Instead of complaining, I should be working harder. <sighs> I cross my arms. You always look at your feet whenever you reach the underarm turn. Instead, focus on counting your steps and let Prince Rod lead you. Worrying too much on your next step is what puts you off rhythm. Emmeline stares at me. 
Can you dance, Lucette? I can. Why? Wow, that's amazing! There is nothing amazing about my being able to dance. Her praise makes me embarrassed, regardless. Maybe I could learn faster seeing someone else do the dance first. Oh, Emmeline, I am so glad you suggested this. Um, what are you talking about? It might be easier to copy the steps if I can have someone perform them first. She turns to me suddenly, eyes bright. Would you help me? I am meant to assist Emmeline in any way that I can, but dancing with her brother? Surely a lowly maid should not be doing this. Uh... Mm. I want to accept so badly. Uh, but I feel like Rod's just gonna like stomp out of here, or Sir Mithros is gonna be like peer around one of these pillars and be like, ah, I caught you doing something scandalous. I know. I'll just save. Why you know, I got all these save things. Let's just save. I just would feel better if I refused right now. I don't think this is a good idea. Ugh, barf. Yeah, even if I do agree, I doubt Rod would even want to dance with me. You cannot learn how to dance by watching someone. You have to practice the steps yourself. But... If you need a break, you can just say so, Em. No, really. I find it easier to learn through visuals. Sorry for making you uncomfortable, Lucette. Let's just continue our practice, Rod. Emmeline smiles at me, but it is obvious that she looks more disheartened now. Rod looks at his sister before shaking his head. Oh, I got you to approach me! So it's okay. I didn't overstep my maid bounds. He turns to walk toward me. He holds out his hand. Would you dance with me? What? Rod leans closer to me and speaks in a low voice. Play along. This is just for Emmeline. <laughs> oh, Sebi, thank you! He's actually curious about your dancing, princess. Ugh. I am surprised when Sebi suddenly whispers to me. I can tell it is Sebi by the change in the pitch of voice. Oops. Sorry, Rod. <laughs> Rod glares at Sebi before looking at me again. Well, uh... I shift my gaze to Emmeline, who is practically beaming. <sighs> I take Rod's hand. I know Emmeline does not like treating me as a maid, but this is a little too much. Fine, just this once. Yes, excellent. Excellent! I approve! I put my hand on his shoulder and he places his hand on the small of my back. Rod looks at me but quickly averts his gaze. <laughs> is something wrong? I didn't think I would ever have to dance with you is all. Neither did I. Rod looks at me again. This time he has an uncomfortable scowl on his face. He is not the only uncomfortable one here. We both start dancing and I mentally start counting the steps. It has been a long time since I last danced with anyone, but the steps come to me naturally. The dance is rather simple. While Rod and I move stiffly, I cannot help but notice his careful footwork. I realize that Rod really is a pretty decent dancer. Of course, I would never openly admit that. When we stop, I hear Emmeline clapping her hands as she looks at the both of us in awe. You really are a good dancer! Thank you so much for showing me the steps. Now I know for sure what to do during that part. I just shrug at her before stepping back into the corner. Emmeline takes her position in front of Rod once more. This time she has a bright smile on her face. I cannot believe something as simple as that has made her so happy. At the end of the day, Emmeline has managed to do the steps correctly. She tells me many times how grateful she is for the help. After practice, I return to my room and retire to bed. I think about how happy Emmeline was. How can such small things make a person so happy? Great, another one of these. You stepped out of rhythm again, Lucette. But mother, this is really hard. A princess never complains. You must perfect this waltz by tomorrow. Otherwise, I will not allow you to play with your dolls for the day. But if you have time for objections, you have time to push yourself harder. 
Now, once again from the top.